Balaba Kirit Bardari Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Prajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pastaya Bhutali, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschachate Shatarine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 10, entitled Deliverance of the Yamala Arjuna Trees. This morning, beginning text number 23, and then we'll go on to 24 and 25. First we will read 23. Shri Shuka Uvacha Evam Mukvasa Devashya Gato Narayan Ashramam Nala Nala Kuvara Manigriva Vasatur Yamal Arjun Sri Shuka Ovacha Evam Mukvasa Devarshiya Gato Narayan Ashramam Nala Kuvara Manigrivo 
Asatur Yamalajuna Shri Shuka Ovacha Evam Ukvasa Devarshi Gatona Rain Ashramam Nala Kuvara Manigriva Vasatur Yamal Arjuna Shri Shukha Avacha, Shri Shukha Dev Goswami continued to speak. Evam Ukva, thus uttering, Sa, he, Devashi, the greatest saintly person, Narada, Gata, left that place Narayana Ashramam for his own ashram known as Narayana Ashram Nalakuvara Nalakuvara Manigrival and Manigriva Asatu Remain there to become Yamala Arjuna, twin Arjuna trees. Translation, Sukadeva Goswami continued, Having thus spoken, the great saint Devashi Narada returned to his ashram, known as Narayan Ashram, and Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva became twin Arjuna trees. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Arjuna trees are still found in many forests and their skin is used by cardiologists to prepare medicine for heart trouble. This means that even though they are trees, they are disturbed when skinned for medical science. We'll continue. Text number 24. Translation. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, to fulfill the truthfulness of the words of the greatest devotee, Narad, slowly went to that spot where the twin Arjuna trees were standing. There's no purport. We'll read text number 25. Although these two young men are the sons of the very rich Kuvera, and I have nothing to do with them, Devashi Narada is my very dear and affectionate devotee, and therefore, because he wanted me to come face to face with them, I must do so for their deliverance. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva actually had nothing to do with devotional service or seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. 
For this is not an ordinary opportunity. It is not that because one is very rich or learned or was born in an aristocratic family, one will be able to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. This is impossible. But in this case, because Narada Muni desired that Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva see Vasudev face to face, the Supreme Personality of Godhead wanted to fulfill the words of his very dear devotee, Narada Muni. If one seeks the favor of a devotee instead of directly seeking favors from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is very easily successful. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has therefore recommended Vaishnava Thakura Tomara Kukura Bulia Janaha Mori Krishna Se Tomara Krishna Dite Para One should desire to become like a dog in strictly following a devotee. Krishna is in the hand of a devotee. Adurlabam Atma Bhakto. Thus, without the favor of a devotee, one cannot directly approach Krishna. What to speak of engaging in his service? Naratam Das Thakur therefore sings, Jadiya Vaishnava Seva Nishtara Paechi Keba. Unless one becomes a servant of a pure devotee, one cannot be delivered from the material condition of life. In our Gaudiya Vaishnav society, following in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami, our first business is to seek shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, Adal Gurvashraya. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we were hearing now how Lord Krishna is responding to the desire of his devotee Narada Muni. The Lord is Bhakta Vatsala. He reciprocates with the devotee according to the desire of the devotee Krishna likes to act. Therefore, it's recommended, Prabhupada explains in the purport here, that it's easier to approach the Lord when you go through his devotee. To try to go directly to Krishna will not be possible. But if we go through his devotee, then the devotee can introduce us to Krishna. Prabhupada gives some different references there in the purport, different verses. Naratam Das Thakur saying, take the service of a devotee. We learn from Rupa Goswami the importance of accepting the shelter of a spiritual master. He has listed 
64 items of devotional service. And the first five items are all in relation to the spiritual master. Sometimes people ask, is it necessary to get a spiritual master? Is it necessary to be initiated? Well, if we're following scriptures, it is necessary. Rupa Goswami certainly emphasized the importance of not only accepting the shelter of a spiritual master and taking instruction from him, but he also mentions about taking initiation. It's these different items are all there. And uh, Rup we see also Lord Krishna himself also showed the example accepting the spiritual master. That Lord Krishna along with Lord Balaram, they went to the ashram of Sandipani Muni and they stayed there for some time and they accepted initiation from him and they served him they fulfilled his desire so Lord Krishna he doesn't need to take but he wants to show the example to everyone else so taking the shelter of a spiritual master can help us very quickly to get the mercy of Krishna. It's mentioned that one of the items of devotional service, uh, pure devotional service, is very rarely achieved. But very easily achieved by the grace of the pure devotee. Lord Krishna does not directly give pure devotion. He does not directly accept people. People come to him directly without the introduction from the devotee. Lord Krishna is not much interested. But when we come with rec the re recommendation from his devotee, then that is pleasing to Krishna. Lord Krishna does not give pure devotional service because he knows that if he gives pure devotion to someone, then he becomes obliged to them. Just like we're seeing here, Lord Krishna is obliged to Narada Muni. Because Narada Muni is his pure devotee, Lord Krishna has to fulfill his desire. And similarly, Lord Krishna, uh, he, ha he had to fulfill the desire of Maharaj Yudhisthira, delivering mail, going, going to Dhritarashtra, going to Duryodhan, and trying to avoid the battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna did this on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira. It was just trouble. Lord Krishna had to become the chariot driver for Arjuna. Lord Krishna accepted these different services because he's obliged to his pure devotees. So Krishna does not so easily give pure devotion because he doesn't want to have to be fulfilling the desires of all of these different people. But the pure devotees are more merciful than Krishna. They, they, they will give the mercy. Therefore, very important to approach the devotee. And Approaching the devotee means following the instructions, following the orders of the spiritual master. We don't just take a spiritual master for fashion. Sometimes people think you just go and take initiation and that's it finished. But initiation is simply the beginning of the process. We have to take instruction. We have to be guided by them. We see some nice examples in the line of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For example, uh, Ishwara Puri, he faithfully served Madhavendra Puri. 
and because he was a faithful servant of Madhavendra Puri, he was blessed by his spiritual master. And the result was Ishwara Puri became the, the Acharya in the line of disciplic succession after Madhavendra Puri. And he went on to become the initiating spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's the, the sign that he, he got the mercy of the Supreme Lord, that Krishna himself came as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take initiation from him. But on the other hand, Ramachandra Puri, Ramachandra Puri was also a disciple of Madhavendra Puri, but Ramachandra Puri, he had the habit not of taking instruction, but trying to give instruction. And he tried to instruct his own spiritual master that when Madhavendra Puri was leaving the body, he was lamenting in the mood of separation from Krishna. And at that time, Ramachandra Puri came and told him, Oh, do not lament Guru Maharaj. Just simply think of the Brahman and appreciate the Brahman and in this way be joyful. So when Madhavendra Puri heard this, he was, not, he was not pleased. And he told Ramachandra Puri, he said, you get out of here. He said, if I have to see your face at the time of leaving this body, I will never achieve my desired destination. And the result of Madhav, this Ramachandra Puri, because he did not get the mercy of his spiritual master, the result was he went everywhere and he had the habit of just finding fault with people. And he even came to Jagannath Puri and he found fault with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That when the, he came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he saw that insects were crawling around in the in the room where Lord Chaitanya was staying. And then Ramachandra Puri said, Ah, now I know it's true. Before I had heard that you people eat too many sweets. Now I see it must be true. So many insects are crawling everywhere here. You must have been keeping Mahaprasadam laying here. Therefore so many ants and insects have come. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, he told his servant that from now on, bring me only one portion of what you usually serve me. And he would, he greatly reduced his eating. So that was very painful for all the devotees. So this is what happens when you don't get the mercy of the spiritual master. You become accustomed to criticizing and finding fault with others. So the order of the spiritual master is very important. We want to get the mercy of the spiritual master and we get that mercy by following the instruction. Just like our own founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, he was inspired by reading the purport in Bhagavad Gita to the verse in the second chapter which describes Vayavasayatmika uh, buddhi ekeha kurunandana Those who are on this path are resolute in determination and their aim is one, O beloved child of the Kurus. The intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. So when Prabhupada read Vishwanath Chakravarti's purport to this verse, uh, in that purport Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur had said, the order of the spiritual master is the life and soul of the disciple. So when Prabhupada read this purport, he was inspired that my spiritual master wanted me to preach. And he wanted me to preach with the English language. So he thought, best place to do that is 
let me go to the West. So previously Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he had sent people to England, but Srila Prabhupada decided he would go to America. Because certainly in the 1960s, America was very prosperous economically, much more so than the UK. So Prabhupada went there to the USA and his meditation was, this is the order of my spiritual master. And because he took up the order, he took up the mission of the spiritual master, he was successful. We see another example, uh, the, another disciple of Madhavendra Puri, oh no, a disciple of Ishwara Puri was Govinda. So when Ishwara Puri was leaving the body, he told his disciple Govinda that you go and serve Chaitanya Mahap, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya. We call Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His sannyas name was Sri Krishna Chaitanya. So Ishwara Puri told Govinda, you go there and serve him. So when Govinda went to Puri, he told Lord Chaitanya, I've come to be your servant. But Lord Chaitanya said, oh no, you're my god brother. I cannot take service from you. That is not Vaishnava etiquette to take service from the God-brother. But then they consulted with others like Swarup Damodar, Goswami was there also, and they concluded that the order of the spiritual master is final. Because the spiritual master, in this Ishwara Puri, he'd order Govinda, go there and be the servant. So Govinda went there and became the servant of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He took the order of the spiritual master. Another example of executing the order of the spiritual master comes when Lord Chaitanya went to Trichy to see Lord Ranganath in Sri Rangam. Sri Rangam is near to Trichy in Tamil Nadu. Sri Rangam is the biggest Vaishnava temple in the world. Right? Very big temple. And uh, so Lord Ch this is 500 years ago. Lord Chaitanya went there. And when he was going to the temple every morning to see the deity, he saw there's a Brahman reciting Bhagavad Gita. But the Brahmana was not well educated and he could not pronounce the Bhagavad Gita verses well. And other brahmanas were laughing and ridiculing him. Though so Lord Chaitanya would observe this every morning. And he saw that the brahmana who was reading the Bhagavad Gita was also crying. So after some days of seeing this brahmana, Lord Chaitanya decided he must speak with this Brahmana and inquire from him. So he asked the Brahmana, what are you doing, my dear Brahmana? And the Brahmana said, my spiritual master told me every day I have to read the Bhagavad Gita. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, he said, very good. You're following the instructions of the spiritual master. That's very important. And uh, we can quote that verse. Yashya deve para bhakti yata deve tata guru tashaiti prakita hyarta prakashanti mahatmana. And to those who have faith in both the Supreme Lord and the spiritual master, then all the purports of the scriptures are revealed very easily. We have to have faith in both Krishna and Guru. Sometimes we ask people, do you have more faith in Krishna or more faith in Guru? 
And then some people will say Krishna and other people will say Guru. But the answer is we should have equal faith in both Krishna and Guru because they're non-different. The Guru is the representative of Krishna. So the, this Brahmana was following the order of the spiritual master. And because he was following the order of the spiritual master, Lord Chaitanya blessed him. And Lord Chaitanya instructed him how to read Bhagavad Gita, how to pronounce it correctly. Actually, Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana he was the real reader of the Bhagavad Gita. Because he was reading that Bhagavad Gita with great transcendental love for Lord Krishna. Thinking how merciful Lord Krishna is that he becomes the chariot driver of his devotee Arjuna. These are some examples of the, spirit, the order of the spiritual master. How it's very important for us to follow carefully. Just like when we take initiation, we make vows. It's very important for us to keep these vows, to strictly follow them. Sometimes we don't appreciate the responsibility we, we don't take it so seriously, but it's very important if we want to get the real blessings of the spiritual master, we have to strictly follow. So the order of the spiritual master, very important. Getting the guidance of the devotee, very important. Another pastime in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we hear how when Lord Chaitanya was residing in Jagannath Puri, different people would come and they would like to read their writings or their poetry or their dramas to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very particular in about hearing from different people and he did not like to hear from anybody who had written something which was tinged with Mayavadi philosophy. Therefore, before Lord Chaitanya would hear, whoever would come there and want to read their writing or their drama or their poetry, they would have to read it first of all to Swarup Damodar Goswami. And Swarup Damodar would approve it or not approve it. So, Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how one Bengali poet had come there and he had written about Lord Chaitanya and Lord Jagannath. And the devotees all thought it was very nice. But when Swarup Damodar Maharaj heard it, he was angry because he saw that in the poem, the, the, the Bengali man had written his poetry and he had allowed the Mayavadi philosophy to influence it because he, co he compared that the body of Lord Jagannath was material and that there was a difference between the soul of Jagannath and the body of Jagannath. And he also spoke that, like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's body is also material and the soul is different from the body. So this is offensive. Certainly in our case, the body and the soul are different. Our body is material and the soul is spiritual. But in the case of the Supreme Lord, there's no difference between his body and his soul. Therefore, for Lord Jagannath, there's no question of the soul being different from the body. They're the same. And similarly with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's the Supreme Lord. So, Swarup Damodar Maharaj pointed out to this Bengali man that he told him, he gave him very important instructions, which is often quoted, 
Bhagavata Paridhya Bhagavata Stani. If you're going to describe the Supreme Lord, you want, or if you want to understand the Bhagavat philosophy, you have to hear it from the devotee. Bhagavata Pari, Bhagavata Stani, Vaishnavera Stani. Bhagavata Pari, Vaishnavera Stani. Hear it from the devotee. Devotee is also Bhagavat. But you have to hear it from the proper devotee, from the proper source. If we don't hear from the proper source, then we'll become, we'll, we'll get it wrong. We'll make, we'll allow the Mayavadi philosophy to come in. And so and this is offensive to the Supreme Lord. Swarab Damodar told this Brahmana that you've made an offense, you've made offenses in your description of the Lord like this. You describe the Lord like this, you'll go to hell. And so the Brahmana, he heard Swarup Damodar's instructions, the importance of hearing from the Brahma, this Brahmana who had written the poetry was very humble and he accepted the criticism, the chastisement of Swarup Damodar and he surrendered to the devotees and then later on he was introduced to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he stayed there in Jagannath Puri in the association of devotees. So today is also a very auspicious day because it's the appearance day of some great devotees. One of them is Shamananda. Shamananda, some places they say Shamananda Prabhu, other places they say Shamananda Pandit. Right? Jiva Goswami had given names to the because Shamananda was one of the students, he was one of the very best students at Jiva Goswami's school in Vrindavan. When Jiva Goswami came there to Vrindavan, one of the things which he did was to establish a school to train the devotees. And the top students were Naratam, Srinivas and Shamananda. So Jiva Goswami gave them names, Naratam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya, a Shamananda Pandit or Shamananda Prabhu. So sh they, they studied there at Jiva Goswami's school and Shamananda, while well, he was staying there in Vrindavan at Jiva Goswami's school, he would take up the service to go and sweep the Seva Kunj, the place where Lord Krishna dances Rasa Lila with the gopis. So Shamananda was sweeping there every day and one day he found very beautiful ankle bells from the, you know, as ladies wear, they decorate their ankles with some bells. So he found this very beautiful ornament from the ankles of some lady he, it was very attractive, he, so he picked it up, he kept it with him. He didn't know who it who belonged to. So he took it home and kept it with him. Because every day he was sweeping, cleaning, just like devotees do here at the Dam in Mayapur. They go and clean along the bank of the Ganga. It's very nice, Dam Seva. I heard also some devotees, like Govinda Maharaj took some devotees with him to Radha Kund and he got them all to clean Radha Kund, to sweep all around Radha Kund, to clean. So it's very nice Seva. So Shamananda was doing like that every day and he found this brace, ankle bracelet so after some days, a young girl came to him, a very attractive young girl came and she was requesting, did you find some bracelet from, you know, a lady's ankle bracelet? Did you find the ornament there in the Seva Kunj? Because I know you're cleaning there every day. 
So my friend, she lost her bracelet. Do you have it? So Shamananda, he, ha he somehow he was puzzled. Who, how did she know I would have it? Anyway, Shamananda, he gave it to her. And uh, this girl who came, this girl who came to offer to get the bracelet back, was this Radharani or this was the servant of Radharani? Lalita. Oh, so Lalita came. Lalita Saki, Radharani's friend, she came. And was she the one who put the mark on Shamananda's head? Lalita? Did she put that tilak on his head? Huh? Radharani did that. She gave the tea light. Oh, tell her to come. Oh, so she had, Radharani had to come. Oh, okay. So Lalita didn't get the bracelet, but he told, Shamananda told Lalita, you tell your friend to come. So Radharani herself came and got the bracelet. And then she put the mark on his head and Tilak? Huh? Oh, I see. Oh, oh, that's it. Okay, so it's like that. It's uh, Pankajangari Prabhu says it's like this. It's a kind of U shape. And she put the bracelet on his head, left the mark there, and that became the Tilak for Shamananda and for all the followers of Shamananda. And that was this, a special tea light given by Radharani. And before that, his name was Duki Krishna, right? So she gave him a new name, Shamananda. Duki Krishna Das. Previously, his name was Duki Krishna Das, but Radharani gave him the name Shamananda. So, it created some problem because he had a guru already who had given him the name uh, Duki Krishna Das. And when his, his guru heard that he changed his name, guru became very angry, became quite upset. And he came there to Vrindavan to see Jiva Goswami because he thought Jiva Goswami had changed his name. But Jiva Goswami said, I never changed his name. I didn't do, give him that name. And so he went to the Shamananda and you, because also the guru previously, he was a, a cowherd boy. His guru he'd taken initiation from was a cowherd boy in Sakyaras and he can't, they'd been cultivating the mood of Shakar, Sakyaras. But after coming to Vrindavan, and being with Jiva Goswami, he went on from Sakyaras up to into Madhurya Ras and became more in the mood, of, became in the mood of the gopis. So, Srimati Radharani gave him that name, Shamananda, and uh, the guru was challenging, but then he saw that it was Radharani herself who had given him the name. Shamananda. It, it wasn't Jiva Goswami, it was Srimati Radharani had personally given him the name. So the Guru accepted. So anyway, after being in Vrindavan, Shamananda and then Naratam Das and Srinivas, Jiva Goswami sent them for preaching because Lord Chaitanya had completed his pastimes and the devotees in Bengal were needing association. They were needing to hear more from the Goswamis. The Goswamis had been re residing in Vrindavan and writing books. So Jiva Goswami arranged for copies of all the books to be given to, Jiva, to uh, the three devotees, Shamananda, Naratam and, and Sh Shamananda, Naratam and Srinivas. 
and they gave him a bullock cart and he sent some soldiers with them and they went off to go to Bengal to preach. They left Vrindavan to go to Bengal for preaching and they're bringing the books with them. But on the way, when they came to a particular town, the books were stolen. So when the books were stolen, Shamananda and Naratam were going to give up their life. They wanted to drown themselves in the lake nearby. They felt so bad. But Srinivas told them, no, no, don't worry, we'll find the book. I will stay here and find the books. But you go ahead with your preaching. Narat Naratam went to Bangladesh and preached there. And Shamananda, he went to Arissa and he preached in Arissa. Srinivas, his preaching was more around here. Did I heard we restored the temple of Srinivas? Is it somewhere near? There was the, the Mayapur Vrindavan Trust. They renovated a big temp a temple of Srinivas Acharya. Nadigram. Yatigram. It, it's actually Srinivas Acharya's temple. Mm, made a new temple. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So a temple there, Yatigram, not far away from Mayapur. So Srinivas, he was preaching around here. So he stayed there where the books were stolen and then there was a king nearby and he went to the king's palace. The king was having Bhagavatam classes there and, Narat and Srinivas went there and he spoke much better, defeated all the pundits there so they understood he was a, a really great devotee, a great scholar and then they found out actually the king was the one who had arranged for stealing all these books because it, the king thought it was treasure it was treasure, but the, the, the king was thinking it was going to be gold or jewels or money, but it was actually books. And the books were books like Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhakti Rasamrita, Sindhu, Upadesha, these kind of books. And so the, this was real treasure. But the king, you know, the king was a devotee, but he, he was, you know, it was a surprise for him when he saw their book. So he gave the books back and he became a devotee. The whole kingdom became devotees and they built temples there and they became nice Vaishnavas by the mercy of Srinivas. But Shamananda, he went to Arissa and he preached in Arissa. And his prominent disciple was a person called Rasikananda. He had this one disciple, Rasikananda. He was very powerful. Rasikananda, you can read about the life. There's a book published by Bhaktivika Swami about the life of Rasikananda, his pastimes. He was so powerful, he, he had some, one big elephant was destroying a village one time. And at that time, Rasikananda was preaching to the man, the chief of the village, and he was trying to get the chief of the village to become a devotee. So at that time they heard this elephant is destroying the village. So the village chief said to Rasikananda, if, if you can get this elephant to stop, then I will become your devotee. So Rasikananda went out there and he stood in front of the elephant and he chanted the holy name in the ear of the elephant and the elephant fell down at his feet and shed tears. And so he initiated the elephant, gave him the name Gopal. And even tigers even were tamed by Rasikananda and became like his disciples. So Shamananda, he has the temple there. Radha Shamsundar is there in uh, Vrindavan. There will be a big festival there today. Shamananda, he was very prominent preached all over Arisa and made many devotees there. We can see in Iskon today the fruit of his preaching. We have so many nice sannyasis from Arisa. Right. Gorgovinda Maharaj, of course, 
was Prabhupada disciple and then now we have Bhakti Purushottam Swami and we have people like Asita Krishna Maharaj and there's one, there's several, oh, uh, Prabodhananda Maharaj also from Arisa, many Arisan sannyasis. This is the fruit, the seed which was planted by Shamananda. So today is his appearance day. Today is also the day Balaram's Rasa Purnima, is it? Dance Rasa, Rasa Lila. Vrindavan, we spoke about that a couple of days ago. And this, today is also the appearance day of Vamsi Das. Vamsi Das. Vamsi Vadana. Vamsi Nandana. And Janani Vas Prabhu told me he is an incarnation of Krishna's flute. So all of Krishna's paraphernalia. They're all conscious, they all have consciousness and sometimes his paraphernalia appear and take part in Krishna's pastimes. So Vamsi Nandana was an incarnation of Krishna's flute. And today's his appearance day also. Okay, any questions there? No questions today? Okay. Jananivas, anything to add? Any corrections? Pankajangari Prabhu? They wanted this gun to take over? <laughs> so Janani Vas Prabhu is describing about temple established by Shamananda Jagiram Jagiram eh? Jagjig eh? Oh, you're talking about the Srinivas Acharyas. He became Srinivas's disciple or Shamananda's disciple. Srinivas. You're talking about Birampur, is it? Vishnupur. Birampur, that place. Yeah. So when Srinivas was looking for the Bhagavatams because he wanted to find who had stolen them, so he went to the king's palace and 
the, the king felt guilty when he saw that there were books, only books, because he was thinking he was stealing money. He felt guilty. He saw the books and he was having everyday Bhagavatam discussion in the palace anyway. So he was something of a devotee and there were pundits there in his palace. So Shamananda somehow was able to get in there and to attend the Bhagavatam and he could speak much better than any of the pundits and he could defeat the pundits and he went on to explain the Bhagavatam so nicely that the king was impressed that oh, this, oh, this one man is such a great devotee. And so the king became the disciple of Srinivas and then he built some temples. And so Prabhupada said it, it's, a, it's so much easier to spread Krishna consciousness when the heads of the state will support. And Prabhupada would often request some of the heads of state, you know, please support our people. I was reading Shamsundar's Prabhu's book about uh, chasing rhinos with the Swamiji and he was describing how the Canadian consulate had come, consulate general had come to some program there where Prabhupada was having a big pandal in Delhi. So Prabhupada began, when Prabhupada spoke, he addressed the Ch Canadian consulate general. He told him, we have our centers and Prabhupada named about seven or eight different cities in Canada where we have centers. So he said, I request you, please help our men. <laughs> you know, he was telling the, the men, you should help them, you, they need help, you should support them. And Prabhupada would always try to get help from the, the different leaders of state, heads of state, politicians. Another time, and he was telling, uh, so, who was it, Kim? Some one, 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 one person came from America, and he said, "Well, you can arrange for me to meet with the prime, with the president of America." He said, "I will meet him. You can arrange the meeting." <laughs> And when he met Indira Gandhi, he was asking Indira Gandhi, I want visas for my foreign disciples to stay in India because they have difficulty to get extensions for their visa. So you can please help them. It will help me to establish the Krishna consciousness movement here in India. So, so it's very much easier if you get the support of the state. And you can see like in Buddhist countries, when you go to a Buddhist country, you see so many temples are there and the Buddhists, they have so many facility, they get land, and you know, they're given help by the state. So we also hope, you know, the government will also support Krishna consciousness movement. Can you say it again? Well, he didn't know there were books. That's the point. Why, why did the king organize people to steal the books? If he's a devotee, why did he organize people to steal? The king didn't know there were books. The king th had heard, his astrologer had told him, there are some people passing through your kingdom and they are bringing with them very valuable treasure on their cart. They've got some very valuable treasure. So the king thought, well, this is a chance for me to uh, improve my treasury. I will get some more wealth for keeping my treasury. So the king arranged for some people to go there in the night when they were all asleep and to steal whatever they had with them. So the, the king's men came in the night, they stole everything 
And when the devotees woke up in the morning and they saw everything had gone, and they were devastated because they had walked all the way from Vrindavan and they'd got, they were just coming into Bengal and the books were stolen. And so it was a big disaster for them because the books were so important to give to the devotees, to enliven to the devotees. When Prabhupada went to America, he took with him crates of Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto. At that time only the first canto was available. And Prabhupada took it with him, he shipped it to America. And even Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, when he sent people to Europe, he had a book specially written. The book, the book was that one by uh, Sanyao, Professor Sanyao. He had written a book about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada had overseen it and guided it, helped him in writing it. And it was meant to be used there when they went to England that they could present this to the people, that this is the philosophy of our Krishna consciousness movement. So the books, very important. Prabhupada was always concerned to get the books printed. In different countries, wherever we go, we have to translate and put the books into the local languages. Oh, Pankajangari Prabhu is saying that where the, when the king had taken the books and he saw there were books and then he heard also from Shamananda and he was con convinced about the philosophy, he had all the books copied and he kept copies of all the books and gave the original books back to Sh Srinivas and Srinivas could go ahead to his preaching. He maintained this kingdom. <laughs> Janani Vas Prabhu is explaining that the king had thieves working for him on his behalf. And when people would come traveling through the kingdom, these thieves would steal from them and give everything to the king, give to the king. And in this way the king was maintaining his kingdom.
Yeah, without books we can do nothing. R remember when we first came in India, there were no books, nothing. And we had to bring them from the West when we first came in India, 1971, 72, like that, there were no books. We had one book, in ba we had one Bhagavad Gita in the Calcutta temple. I was in Calcutta temple, we had one book, one Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, right, uh, so we had one book. Even when Bhakti Charu joined, I remember now, Bhakti Charu Swami came 1977. I think it was, he was coming and we wanted to give him a book. We only had one Bhagavad Gita and I said, well, we use that for class. So I said, get, maybe we can give this book. We gave him the Nectar of Devotion instead. But we only had a, a few books. We had the bag, one Bhagavad Gita, one Nectar of Devotion. So I said, let's keep Bhagavad Gita, we can have class and let him take the nectar of devotion. And, and he took it and he loved it. He fell in love with the book when he read it. He said it was so wonderful. It convinced him to become a devotee. Reading Prabhupada's book. So books, the ammunition for our preaching. Now we have books. Now, of course, you have e-books. <laughs> you have e-books, you have the different kind of books. People are all reading their mobile phones, everything's there. Oh. For how many years? Bhaktivinoda Thakur was looking for a Chaitanya Charitamrita for six or seven years before he could find one. It's so difficult to find the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now the Sankirtan devotees are going door to door distributing Chaitanya Charit. Jai Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki.